everyone. Um, democracy is a little rough in the, you know, in the morning here. Oh, that was a shot. Okay. Um, Freedom burns. <laughs> I love it. Yeah, so, you know, I'm Josh Franklin. And I'm Kevin Franklin. You know, and we're going to talk about some of the, like, uh, like online election hijinks that we've been seeing since 2012, and then basically talk about our efforts to protect the 2018 midterm elections. We'll uh, basically be seeing some uh, some typo squatting on like, uh, you know, large, w- well-known po- political figures, political parties. Also take a look at malware inside of uh, campaigns um, and state, uh, state election websites. So this is a real important disclaimer. Um, this, this work really does not represent the opinions of our employers. Uh, this is personal work. We do this on personal time. Uh, I'm working out of the basement. He's working out of the basement. Uh, it is intended to be party agnostic, despite my goon-like colors. And my, and my blue one. Yeah. <laughs> so, so not a goon. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, so this, you know, this is your typical voting machine. Uh, it is something that folks have been, you know, spending uh, a lot of really good time looking at in uh, investigating since the year 2000, 2002. We are not talking about these. Uh, we are, you know, going to be talking about the stuff that actually has been uh, attacked. We're going to be taking a look at all the things uh, surrounding uh, like these systems to make these things function. Here's the agenda that we'll cover today. Uh, we're going to talk about the history of our project. Uh, it's been a labor of love for us. Uh, we'll talk about the methodology of, of how we do what we do. We're going to spend some time trying to educate you and uh, inform you about the elections infrastructure. Uh, we'll look at some results of some campaign analysis that we've done. Uh, we'll look at some state results. We'll look at results of scanning vendors. Um, we'll have some recommendations, and we'll have some con- conclusions at the very end. Thank you. Okay, so on this slide, I got to hold the sword. Uh, It was a big deal for me, so uh, (laughs) I wanted to have a white hat, a white top hat, but uh, uh, so I'm Kevin Franklin. (laughs) Yeah, and I'm Josh Franklin, uh, and uh, so I've been in the game since 04, uh, since I started in college. Uh, I've been working with, you know, election systems in some form or fashion ever since. I helped set up and, you know, run and repair uh, voting machines in the state of Georgia for about six years, five years, um, while I was in college, uh, and then I moved to the U.S. Election Assistance Commission, where I uh, uh, basically did testing and certification of voting systems, uh, and then I moved uh, to the National Institute of Standards and Technology, where I've been basically leading some of the cybersecurity aspects of the voting project there. I have recently worked there, and I'm not speaking for any of those folks. <laughs> Yeah, and, and my background is IT. I've been in IT for about 30 years. Um, my my history really is in performance and optimization of code, transactions per second, think of it that way. Um, early on, I did some work with, uh, with Lockheed and with NASA. Uh, I've been in big data for about the last 20 years, and I work for a financial institution. Word, word. Yeah, uh, this, one's, oh. this one's yours, man. Yeah. So what is election buster? Uh, getting, getting terminology right is, uh, is often a very difficult thing. We tend to overuse the word election buster. Uh, it is a Python application that we've written. We call that election buster. It is also a software suite that we've written that's called election buster, and it's the project itself. Um, but everything that we do is, uh, is all about protecting the US election uh, ecosystem. Um, the scope, this scope is very large. Uh, there, there are lots of candidates. Uh, there, there are tons of election officials, many different voting system manufacturers, service providers. Um, the initial thrust of, of this effort started with trying to find fake presidential sites. And currently, we're assessing different campaign infrastructure and the online state and local infrastructure. And we are identifying fake sites for candidates, PACs, and states. 
Yeah. So this all started in 2012 as a as a George Mason project. Um, go Patriot Hackers. Um, you know, this was just something that I needed a semester project for, and I thought it would be interesting to take a look at. Uh, you know, who was basically typo squatting on Mitt Romney and O. You know, uh, and Obama. Um, we were basically just hunt and peck typing, trying to find various uh, you know fake. Sites. Uh, shout out to you know Robert and Matt who basically uh, were you know uh, really in on the on the ground floor and, and we actually presented our initial results at Schmoocon in fort, uh, in 2014. Uh, after that, we uh, we released the first version of our code um, at B sides DC in 2015. Uh, since then, we've been basically collecting huge amounts of data, uh, looking at all the infrastructure that we can find. Uh, and we were really focusing on basically having a, you know, measurable impact for 2018. And I, uh, I think that you'll see that we basically got there. <laughs> all right, this is this is how we do uh, our election buster work. This is, uh, this is the way we do it. Let's say we're, we're interested in a specific uh, office and analyzing that. Uh, we'll obtain a list of candidates for, that are vying for that office. Um, and we'll also get state election websites that we may be interested in as well. Uh, we process all of that through uh, our election buster tool. And we have the other assessment tools and a grading rubric, rubric that we use at the end. Um, we do a lot of manual analysis. We've automated a lot of that. We, we've, we've thrown a lot out, but there's still a ton to do. There have been several nights where I sit in the basement and I, and I page through a thousand different results or, or web pages uh, that, that we went and found. Um, once we find issues, we do attempt to, uh, to practice responsible disclosure and uh and then we since we're in vegas we party like rock stars like you guys did yeah. last night so. <laughs> Yeah, so, uh, you know, to, to basically bring it down another level, in the, like, top left, we basically get candidate, uh, uh, candidate names, which is basically first name, last name, party, office, year, and state that the candidate's from. We then put that into Election Buster, which then outputs results files, and then those results files go into, uh, go into some phantom JS scripts. Those phantom JS scripts basically take pictures of those websites in, uh, like in memory, and then we just have a crap ton of screenshots. Those screenshots then need either manual uh, analysis, um, but we are uh, also implementing some fairly simple neural networks to basically take out uh, some of the obvious things that we don't really need to look at, things like parked domains. Um, at the same time, we are uh, getting tons of candidate websites alongside voter registration and state websites. Uh, they're there are no lists for those out there. So it's basically me watching 13 Marvel movies making those, you know, giant lists. Um, we then basically do who is lookups and then send them through basically online, uh, security assessment tools. Uh, and then we take those re results files and do manual re uh, view at, at, uh, there. Um, and if like basically something's fun, we're going to be talking about it here. If not, throw it on the pile and it's a giant pile. Yeah, so what systems are actually out there? I like to think about it as basically being in three separate groups, those controlled by some sort of uh, election official, someone from the government. Uh, you know, these are just various egg examples. Uh, you know, you have OpScan, uh, touchscreen systems, ballot marking devices. You have uh, e-poll books for basically checking in voters. You have state election websites. Um, and then you have voter registration systems with online interfaces. Uh, you also have systems that are owned and controlled by candidates. Uh, and those are basically going to be, you know, candidate and party websites and also all of the large databases where they're taking in information from a whole heck of a lot of different sources. And then finally, you have basically third party sites, stuff like PAC and stuff from nonprofits, you know, rock the vote, that sort of stuff. Um, this, you know, infographic, what it's, you know, trying to really show here uh, is basically how information flows from a voter uh, into various parts of the election system. Um, uh, there's, you know, three main 
ways that I would really say that, you know, you know, information leaves a voter here. Uh, voters voluntarily give information to, uh, candidate websites and parties. Um, so that, you know, that's going to be like first name, party affiliation, money. Um, and that's, you know, a, uh, you know, and that's a, uh, that's a voluntary transfer of information, and that's what blue represents here. Uh, and then candidate websites, you know, put that information into the campaign voter information databases in the bottom left-hand corner. Uh, in order to vote, you you like uh, must give information to your state or lo uh, uh, or locality, um, and then that information is then pro provided to the statewide voter registration systems. It is at like that point, there is something a little bit interesting there and that's uh, like basically campaigns can basically ask for information from the uh, from the statewide voter registration system and then also um, they may have to uh, pay for it, but as like a, you know, in order to vote, you like essentially have to give your personal information to these, you know, large candidates um, and parties. On the right hand side, we basically have a whole different type of, of information transaction, and that's basically going to be voter selections, the stuff you put on ballots, put into voting systems, uh, which, you know, ultimately get aggregated and tabulated and, you know, make their way to basically like uh, state election websites. <laughs> and and for me, it came as a surprise that that we gather all this information and then we offer it for sale. Uh, they gathered it for free or uh, they gathered it to register you, but then then it's offered for sale. Yeah. As someone who works in big data, he was, he was very interested in that. Um, <laughs> yeah, so what sort of uh, attacks happened in the 2016 elections? Um, you know, this, you know, really helped to frame how we approached this effort, especially in the past two, two, two years. We have a lot more detail in the back of our slides. Um, uh, and so you can, like, catch that later. Um, but, you know, what we really saw, like I think, summed up into one s slide is basically phishing of campaigns, voting service and uh, providers and manufacturers alongside election officials. We also saw typo squatting on campaign fundraising sites uh, and then party contractor controlled domains. And so like basically, you know, whatever IT company is basically helping some party. Uh, we also saw social media manipulation and disinformation. We didn't do anything with that. There's actually data breaches at the federal, state, and local levels of, um, you know, of you know, private data, essentially. Um, and then we also saw data breaches in candidate and campaign systems. And so basically, you know, if there was data to be breached over the past couple couple of years, it has at least happened once. And one of them was here at DEF CON inside of the, um, you know, voter hacking village, uh, you know, big big shout out to the to the voter hacking village right uh really really cool if you haven't stopped by you should um so they basically found a uh you know county voter information database essentially uh like on an e-poll book and it was just part of the voting machines that they got uh, a a hold of and then there was like basically direct uh, attacks on online voter registration systems and campaign infrastructure And here's my campaigns 101 slide. Um, so for for this midterm uh, election cycle, there are thousands of candidates that are running. Um, we've scanned a lot of them. We've scanned most of them, but I'm sure that we've not scanned all of them. Uh, we've we've got we've got a ton of information, uh, and you know, as you might expect, most of these campaigns are are pretty small. And uh, these guys have little or no IT experience. Um, and then you have just the opposite of that, the, the larger campaigns, which might have a sophisticated uh, staff and uh, a huge IT staff. Uh, we, we did observe campaigns that are being run purely from Facebook or Twitter, Instagram and Snapchat. And maybe that's what the, the future holds is uh, our, our small campaigns like that are, are cheap and they're secure. Maybe so. I like it. Yeah. Uh, back in 2012, here's some of our, you know, you know, fairly early, to, uh, 2012 findings. Um, you know, the really big thing that we, that we found was like a fake DNC and fake RNC accepting donations. Um, uh, and then, you know, we also found a couple in, 
infected political action committee sites. What you can see here at the at the bottom is a screenshot from a Google search result um, called Our Country Deserves Better Pack. Um, and I'm not sure if they really want to be selling Viagra. I don't know what they're trying to say our you know country needs to get better at. But um, you know, uh, so basically they have been compromised and they are basically actively hawking pharma pharma pharmaceuticals. Um, this is uh, you know this is the fake DNC site that we that we found at this point in time in 2012. Uh, the uh, DNC did not own DemocraticNationalCommittee.org. Um, someone else did. Uh, there was also a uh, you know like an RNC corollary as well um and this is a it's an okay site i mean it doesn't super look fishy or odd um but there is a nice big make a donation button there and those um you know i mean uh from what we could tell they were actively taking uh contributions and not passing them along to the dnc uh we reported this to the fbi uh and they were you know su subsequently taken taken down in 2014, that's that's really when I was brought into the project by Josh. He 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 brought me in to to look at some of the code or to give him a hand with some analysis, uh, and it was really our first iteration of election busters. Um, we did find some in our in our CC sites that could potentially confuse voters. So you might be thinking that you're donating to a certain candidate, but you're really giving to the other guys. Um, we found that some of the candidate sites were were actively distributing malware. Um, we also found some leakage of, of sensitive who is information, and it did it did highlight the need to focus on on our analysis. Yeah, yeah. I mean, uh, so so this looks to to be a pro and Kirkpatrick website. It's got great web design. It's got a you know very nice picture, a very large donate button. Right, that's like one eighth of the whole page is that one donate button. Um, and but you know it, what you don't realize. Is is if you don't read that small black text, you're actually voting for her uh, opponent. And we saw 12 other sites like like these, and there was a you know little box at the very, very bottom of all these sites that said owned and operated by the National Republican Congressional Committee. Um, yeah, and those were really interesting. Uh, we have, we found another one here. This is Phil Gingry, I think is his first name. He was running for Senate in Georgia. Um, his site was just, uh, basically distributing malware to anyone who happened to stop by. Um, probably not the best way to get campaign contributions, um, is to, you know, have a nice dropper there. Um, yeah, we tried to actually contact him over Twitter to no avail. Um, this is where we first ran into, you know, responsible disclosure being a big, big problem and saying, hey, actually, it's kind of difficult to contact these folks and let them know uh, that they need to, you know, sort their stuff out. And this is the output from our election buster application. Uh, it's, it's a directed graph is uh, the representation here. Perhaps the text is very difficult for you to read uh, out in the audience. But at the center here, you can see uh, it's Hillary's main site, HillaryForPresident.com. This is data that we gathered on Election Day of 2016. I took that data and put it into R. There's an iGraph package in R that's good for network diagrams. Um, some, of the, uh, some of the nodes around it are... Jeb for president, uh, Rubio 2018, um, let's see, walker.vote, and Cruz sucks. Uh, sucks, okay, yeah, I got that in the mic really well, so, um, but, but what you can see is, you can see uh, how she is, uh, I saw examples on both sides, but how she is uh, squatting on the domain names of several of her competitors, which is a common practice, certainly not illegal. And here's one for Donald Trump in the 2016 election. He did the same thing, uh, or or someone did the same thing. I don't know if it was if if he did this, but uh, Jeb Bush uh, is being redirected to Donald J. Trump. Uh, we have President Cruz, and we have Jeb for president. Ted 2016 is going there as well. These are the fun graphs to draw. And this one's really tiny. So this is uh, 2018. This is uh, middle of July of this past month. Um, let's see what we have. 
Gillibrand, Gillibrand for president, uh, Rock 2020. Dwayne, The Rock Johnson. Dwayne, yeah. Uh, Jumanji. And I don't know if yeah, you have yeah. a... Trump for Trump for Prez, friends of friends of friends of Trump. Yeah, it's uh not not as exciting. Yeah, here we go. So here's where you know we've been doing this for a little while, and we uh, saw one of our biggest failures in our in our project. And I think that's okay. It's you know you know good to uh, take lessons learned, but it was unfortunate that this was such a big lessons learned moment. Uh, so we took uh, uh, Election Buster and made a a version of it made for PACs um, and like other NGO type organizations. Um, and we actually pointed it at Act Blue, which is the primary funding platform for the, uh, you know, for the Democratic Party. Um, and what you would, you know, like what you would do is if you're a candidate, you basically take Act Blue uh, and, you know, embed their widget into your site and you can take money. Um, you know, recent indictments, though, from uh, Mueller, uh, show that when the foreign adversaries got into the DNC and DCCC systems, um, they actually redirected the main, uh, you know, uh, URL on their website for Act Blue to actblues.com. Uh, uh, um, we Actually, a month ago, uh, we found out that we had found actblues.com in our searches um, back in 2016. So while it was going on, we actually looked at that site in the face. Uh, we said, this site looks reasonable. Um, it seems to have good web design. Uh, there's nothing immediately odd. The you know who is information is normal. And uh, it seems to be hosted in a different spot. But no big deal. Uh, Cloudflare. You know, um, and so we basically stared the stuff straight in the face in 2016 and did not realize it goes to show how hard detection actually is. So far this year in 2018, uh, we took the Python code that we had in, I think it was Python 2.5 and 2.7. 7. 7. Okay, and uh, and put it into Python three. Uh, the the threading model that we were using in in the previous version is different than than the process uh, model that we're using now in the, in Python three. So uh, we also had some new variants of templates for packs. Uh, we we included election websites and manufacturers websites, uh, and we started correlating election buster data with open source threat intelligence information. And we started writing a version of evil URL and DNS twist and then realized there's something there already. And uh, we, we decided not to, not to continue that development, just take advantage of the good work that folks have already done and, and utilize those tools. Uh, and we did start looking for some homographic uh, attacks. Yeah. yeah, you do, Linda. Linda. What's up, Linda? Um, yeah, so uh, Linda Coleman uh, is a, uh, you know, it, is someone running for state office in North Carolina. Um, so since she was uh, state, she was generally a little bit under our radar. Um, she had previously ran for lieutenant governor. Um, uh, she, her old lieutenant governor domain uh, had its code stripped from way back machine. Uh, her old d domain was actually purchased, uh, and someone named Yvonne Gusev, or, you know, even Gusev, I'm saying it wrong, sorry. Uh, Ivan. <laughs> Ivan. What am I, I keep saying it wrong. Ivan Gusev, uh, you know, left his name in the who is information there. Um, we did a little bit of research. This is assumed to be a fake name, uh, not necessarily politically motiv motivated. Um, but what you can see is this is, you know, Linda's old, uh, you know, Lou. Lieutenant Governor, uh, page, uh, sorry, domain and page. Um, this was Linda for NC.com. In yellow there, you can see something in French talking about purchasing pharma, pharmaceuticals. If you click donate, uh, you are not going to be offered an opportunity to donate to her campaign. You're going to be buying Viagra. That's the thread through this talk. Um, yeah. Uh, so it's really, really weird though. Um, in some who is interfaces, um, you know, it actually said Ivan Gusev. Um, and you know, this one, it, it just shows that basically a Russian national, uh, you know, owns this 
domain. We don't necessarily think this is politically motivated. I just think that this person purchased this and was just trying to cast a wide net in selling their pharmaceuticals, but um, we're not sure. <laughs> You saw the results of the election buster uh, output that I showed you before with the graphs, and uh, and I think some of the some of the intent was to say you need to be proactive and you need to protect your domain name space, uh, and you need to be uh, you need to buy some domain names that are associated with you or could be associated with you. This guy carried it to the nth. Um, he, he went a little nuts and he bought uh, all of these names all around his, uh, his namespace. And I think it's great, but, but maybe it's a little bit overkill. I think there's 37 uh, websites there, but, uh, but that's cool. Go Pete. Go Pete. <laughs> Pete for Congress. <laughs> Comrade? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so... <laughs> This is uh, so. This is a site that is you know electdevinnunez dot com. Uh, someone wasn't happy with him uh, and made a nice tribute. Uh, you know, uh, basically coded in the you know sickle and hammer and all that. Um, uh, so if you scroll down here, you would see a bunch of Russian oriented uh, you know pictures with. Devin, some really decent photoshops. I think the site is still active. If you wanted to visit it yourself, uh, there didn't seem to be anything wrong with it. Uh, but this is sort of an example of, um, you know, like a free speech issue. This isn't necessarily illegal or, you know, by any means. So we saw this time and time again. Folks really just wanted to, uh, you know, throw up these sorts of domains. Um, another one that we saw was uh, uh, Gillibrand Sucks or Gillibrand Sucks dot, dot com. I think she's, uh, she's, a Democrat from New York, and um, she had uh, this domain purchased against her, and it was redirected to the Democratic Socialists of America page. Um, you know, we want to like show some funny stuff from both sides there. Um, here is Carly Fior 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 uh, Fiorina's uh, current page. Um, you know, really nice. It looks it looks awesome. Nothing nothing fishy here. But then we found that her old site from like 2000 is still going. I don't know what kind of campaign money you, you get to purchase like a domain for 20 years and hosting for 20 years. Um, but it's kind of, you know, it's kind of interesting. We saw tons of this. Candidates just leave their old campaign websites up forever. Um, I don't understand why. Uh, yeah, yeah. It is, it's just kind of odd. And so I'll talk a little bit about the congressional site statistics. Uh, the stats that we're going to show include everyone running for Senate that we could identify. Um, all House incumbents are included in these stats. Uh, we, we included some of the races that we deemed important. Uh, there, there were too many candidates for us to, to include in, in some of this information. Um, and likely there's some skewing towards incumbents. Um, and a majority of these scans we took in June of this year. We, we did rely on Ballotopedia for pulling some of the candidate information. Thank you, Ballotpedia. You're awesome. So I'm gonna let Josh talk a little bit about some of these, but I wanna, I wanna say that there's, uh, in this grading scheme, there's an A plus, and there's an A, there's a B, and, and A is good, um, all the way down to T and F, uh, and then there's no grade. I wanted to put an F minus on the no grade, but Josh, Josh wouldn't let me put an F minus there. But this is the output from our, you know, you know, online scanners that we aren't allowed to mention b because of licensing issues. But we're looking at TLS implementations, and there's grades involved. You figure it out. Um, yeah. So um, what's really great to mention here is that, like, you know, over 50 percent of the, you know, folks in in the house, you know over 60% have uh, a score of B or better. Um, there's about 30% of the folks out there uh, running for house um, have either no TLS or SSL or they have a major cert issue. Um, and so we wanted to, to try and contact all these folks, but it, it got really uh, time consuming really quickly to go to each of their pages and look at the information there and find an email address. Um, yeah, it got to be really, really difficult. Um, if you look at the Senate though, uh, you know, 
tops house, bottoms, Senate. Um, the Senate fare is so much better. About 80% of folks just have an A, uh, and then, uh, you know, 4% had some sort of issue. Uh, we think that's because, the, you know, Senate campaigns are generally uh, better funded, and uh, they, uh, yeah, yeah, I mean, um, I, I think that's just probably the answer, that they're just better funded and around for six for six years. Um, if you look at some of the congressional TLS implementations, uh, you know, from left to right, we have, you know, TLS 1.0, 1.1, 1.2, 1.3. .1 um, and then what you see is that on the giant bar is the, you know, total folks in the House who supported that, that version of TLS, and the tiny uh, uh, bar is the total number of people in the Senate who support that, you know, that uh, version. And what you see is very small usage of TLS 1.3, which just came out. TLS 1.3 does awesome. Um, but, uh, m you know, most folks had TLS 1.2, uh, fewer had 1.0, and even fewer had 1.0, um, and no one had SSL, which is kind of interesting. Really wasn't expecting that. Let's look to the states. Uh, the the states and local jurisdictions, they also have websites. They, they host election websites as well. Um, those election websites, they provide uh, information, results, and, and they help register voters. Uh, the sites could be hosted by the Secretary of State, um, the, the State Board of Elections, uh, or some other third-party group like Cloudflare or Google. Um, the overwhelming majority uh, use a .gov, uh, top-level domain. Others use uh, .us or a .org, TLD. Um, and about half of the voter registration systems, they, they move from .gov to .us or .org. Uh, just not sure why. It's, it's a little, little chaotic there. He's going oh. everywhere, man. You just... Yeah, so this is what one of those voter registration systems look like. Honestly, they're just a web app. Um, I mean, you know, you basically put in information about who you are. There's basically knowledge-based authentic authentication going on. Um, and this is how you register to vote in 37 out of 56 states and territories. Um, speaking of the 56 states and territories, American Samoa uh, is not like... Uh, unincorporated U.S. territory. Um, you know, they actually run separate .gov and .org sites, which is fairly common. We don't know why. Um, maybe the older .org site gets, uh, you know, kept alive. I'm just, I, I'm just, I'm really unclear as to why that happens. Uh, they were using Drupal and they were, um, basically uh, affected by a Drupal vulnerability, as you do. Um, and they actually were do, you know, we're distributing malware to all of the folks who came to their site. Um, it was uh, something that we, you know, contact them them uh, uh, about. There's a big time difference there, obviously. Um, uh, we actually called them up. Um, they, they were a one-person IT operation, um, and uh, they tried to fix it, uh, and then it kept coming back. Um, uh, and then um, it ended up being that you could only get the malware version of their site if it came from an IP outside of the US, which is really strange. I don't quite understand what's going on there. Maybe they knew about us and, or, or something. I have no idea. Something weird was going on there. Um, this is what the, you know, affected website looked like. You can see the, you know, Chrome address bar on the top, you know, on the top left saying this is, this is dangerous. Um, and so this was, you know, American Samoa election office.org is the website here. Um, and then, then stuff started to get weird when we were reviewing uh, everything for this talk. We sort of realized that American Samoa Election Office.org was mentioned in the leaked NSA reality winner mem memo, um, and that um, that memo talked about uh, foreign adversaries sending malware uh, to affect the American Samoa election office systems. Um, it was really weird, um, and they were the only election office that we found that was you know, actively hosting malware. Um, I, although strange, we do believe this to be coincidental, um, partially because it just seems to be a random Drupal vuln that was ex like exploited, um, and the fact that you have to come from outside of the US in order to get the page. Um, but we're not quite sure. <laughs> Me? Yeah. 
Okay. Uh, so uh, remember there are voter registration systems um, and then there are state board of election websites and we put those into two different buckets. They host two different types of information, very, very different uh, sensitivity of the information there. Um, so the voter registration site grades. Um, you know, everyone's heard about these systems being under attack over the past two years. Um, you know, what's really great news uh, is that an overwhelming majority got over a score of B or better. That's awesome. You know, um, I think it's really, really sweet. We did have two Fs um, there, um, and we had a C as, as, as well. Um, we think this is really cool information to have because it's sort of like a measurable thing that folks can be, you know, great uh, against in the future to see if we're getting better, worse, what have you. Um, when we contacted the first F uh, state there, um, they uh, they fixed it immediately. They were extremely happy to get that information. They were like, we're, you, you know, cybersecurity is really important to us, um, and they fixed it ASAP. Uh, the other C and the and, and uh, the, uh, the other F, um, it was a little more complicated. We are two guys coming from, you know, Gmail addresses, so that um, that doesn't look awesome. It's probably a good thing that they were really uh, worried and, you know, on on guard against people phishing them. Um, but it, it took over a month to get a re response, um, and the only way that we were able to get a response was to go through back-end channels. Um, and we'll sort of talk about how to, Im you, you know, improve prove that later. Um, all these are all fixed now, which is dope. <laughs> um, yeah, so HSTS use inside of voter register, uh, you know, inside of voter registration systems. Um, so we saw um, that not a lot of folks, only about 25% of the VR systems had HSTS. This is HTTP strict transport uh, security, and this basically can help stop uh, man in the middle attacks when you're, you know, initially re uh, requesting the HTTP version of a page versus an HTTPS version of the page. Um, no one was on the HTT, sorry, was on the HTTPS. HSTS preload list, and we think that would be a really great thing for voter registration systems to basically sign up for. Ten minutes till the show starts. Okay, um, that was an all that reference. Uh, uh, voter registration vulnera vulnerabilities. There was no heart bleed. There were no poodle. Um, we did see some robot, but we had difficulty parsing those uh, results for some reason, so they're not displayed here. Uh, beast was a fairly common uh, uh, occurrence there. Uh, there are a number of states that still have that in there. There. Not the biggest issue, um, but definitely want to see if we can get that sorted and, and cleaned up. You want to do this one? No? Okay, okay. Mow through. Uh, so the election sites. Um, typically, uh, states have um, a, uh, you know, like a Department of State site or a Secretary of State site. They might also have a State Board of Election site. They might just have a voter registration site to tell you where to go register to vote and to lead you to their voter registration system. And they might also have a results site. So you can imagine results.pencilTucky.gov. Um, about 20% of the folks, um, you know, of the sites that we took a look at had some critical issue, typically just not using TLS or uh, having a cert shared with a couple hundred sites, which is a little bit weird. Um, that was sort of like a cloud uh, misconfiguration issue. We think still haven't got that come that com completely sorted. Um, I think the only way, you know, initially we were sort of being told by states that they don't need to have TLS on their websites. Um, it wasn't un, until that we said this doesn't just protect you, this actually protects your voters as well, uh, that we started to see that, that that argument seemed to have some weight with them. Um, and all these aren't quite sorted yet, but we're working to get these sorted. Um, these th these sites were a little bit older. Um, they were a little bit worse off. Uh, Robot was also in about half, probably. Beast was in half, and there was also Poodle. No one had Heartbleed, again, which is awesome. That's a great news. People should be saying good things when we have good news, right? Um, everything's not on fire. Um, you're up. Okay. So it turns out that vendor sites, uh, vend vendors have websites too, so these are the people who might produce uh, uh, some of the software or some of the hardware. Um, might be some voting system resellers, and it could be voter registration uh, vendors or voting service providers. And 
we we saw some failures here as well. Uh, we did contact the vendors. Good news here is we did contact the vendors, and they were able to address everything pretty pretty quickly. Except for one. Except for one. Kind of got <laughs> crappy with me. Uh, it sort of turned into a, this is not a vulnerability, don't call this a vulnerability, you're a vulnerability type 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 issue. Um, and I was like, listen, I don't, I don't care. Fix it. Fix it. Um, you know, kind of, they were like, don't ever talk about this to anyone. Um, so, so we're not saying anything. Yeah. Um, <laughs> uh, and I think we are, we're at the recommendations. Okay. Okay. We got seven minutes left. We got this. Okay, so recommendations to campaigns. Uh, you know, beware what you click. Everyone already knows this. Uh, you know, two-factor, uh, you know, off, uh, even on personal uh, accounts. Um, I think the campaigns definitely know this now. Um, uh, but, you know, here's a big one that still isn't really uh, uh, addressed. If you're going to run a website, you need to basically defensively typo squat on your own name. Um, you just definitely need to. Uh, we have a, basically a, a giant list of, of ones that you should purchase um, in the back uh, that we saw as being most common. Um, if you want these sites, uh, sorry, if you want these slides, you can go to donaldjtrump.vote. Um, and uh, so, <laughs> seriously, uh, so, uh, you know, basically use a, you know, trusted digital cert, please, you know, you know, TLS 1.2 or better strong, strong cypher suites, uh, use HSTS, especially if you're a long-term incumbent, um, uh, get on that preload list, uh, consider EV certs, um, work with ISPs and FBI for domain take, takedowns, um, and run, you know, free, you know, assessment tools on your own domain, um, for states, again, two two factor off. Uh, you know, uh, especially with your you know personal d devices, password hygiene, all that. Re like purchase common domains like registerpenciltucky.com because um, folks are out there and they're going to be doing that that you know that sort of stuff. Um, uh, maintain a trusted cert. This was a big issue. States just didn't have trusted certs. Use TLS. Um, that's a really r reasonable baseline web thing. Um, get on the HSTS preload list. Uh, it is free. It is one sheet of paper online you have to fill out. Um, if you don't have a .gov site, please get a .gov site because that was a big issue. Does anyone know the, do the domain to get a .gov site? Dot gov, dot gov. Yeah. Um, well played. Um, yeah. Um, so, you know, the, uh, the, uh, EI ISAC and DHS are out there to basically help with threat intel and remediation. Run open source tools against your own domain. Uh, don't just trust other, other folks. Uh, but, you know, do get outside, uh, assessments, vet them first, uh, and make it easy to contact you. It was extremely difficult for someone in this room to contact an election official about some sort of vuln in their site. Um, uh, also, uh, there's like a big new international standard out there, um, and you can, uh, you know, it basically talks about the best ways to make yourself uh, available. I think states should definitely take a look at that standard. Um, you know, use something like security at penciltucky.gov or alert at penciltucky.gov. <laughs> You know, the aftermath, zero sites with SSL, zero homographs, which was very interesting. We expected those. Um, a lot of HTTP. Uh, we had two big VR systems with a, you know, with a grade of F, one with a grade of C. Basically contacted campaigns and vendors uh, about all sorts of issues. Um, we contacted all and worked with some states affected by, you know, likely typo squats, um, sus suspicious domains, poor, you know, TLS implementation, known vulns, uh, untrusted certs and then malware actively on their on their site. A um, little bit of, you know, some thoughts on the U.S. cybersecurity posture in the next two minutes. Uh, the situation is improving, yet there's still some common sense ways to, you know, make things better. Uh, um, and, you know, states are getting some monetary assistance from uh, Congress, but, uh, yeah, you know, we need more of that. Um, the whole community is responding. You know, the, uh, the Center for Internet Security released an, you know, election-focused handbook uh, on cybersecurity in elections. Uh, the uh, the Center for 
Democracy and Technology and the Center for Technology and Civic Life basically work together to make, um, you know, classes for, for election officials to learn cybersecurity basics. And then the defending digital democracy effort is, you know, focusing on, uh, campaign cyber out of Belfer Center in, in Harvard. Last slide. Uh, you know, we need to continue defending our elections. We need to, you know, do more, uh, better at larger scale and faster. Um, uh, so we assess the bare minimum of web se security. What was legal? Um, we honestly think we shouldn't have found what we, you know, what we uh, found. Um, uh, it is difficult to talk with election officials about some of this stuff, um, but that doesn't mean that it's not worth it. Uh, responsible disclosure is very important in the field of elections, especially when folks are actively using these systems to run elections. Um, listen, if you don't vote, you're helping the uh, uh, attackers, uh, you know, you're ultimately, you know, making the system worse. In my, uh, uh, opinion, all this can be done by ordinary citizens. Uh, all, you know, all of y'all can actually help here, right? Um, and if you want to help get involved, work the polls. Folks really, really need you. I like the woo. I like the woo. Yeah, that's what we'll do. Okay. Um, so for a copy of everything, you can also go to please go vote. Um, thank you so much, everyone. <laughs> Thanks, guys. High five. <laughs>